Hello friends and welcome to this week's edition of One Question Each. Hope you're all well wherever you are. Um, this week it's my turn to ask the question and I'm once again going to link it to the workshop that we are hosting in the beginning of June in Vigna Velia. For those of you that live here, come and join us. It's going to be a, a very interesting, thought-provoking and truly heart-opening weekend. Now, to tie it in, last time we spoke of one of the topics which was original sin or Buddha nature. And this week I'm going to take us all the way towards the end of the workshop where we talk about the masculine and the feminine. And, as it so happens today, we are representing. I'm pink, I'm a girl, he blue, he a boy, <laughs> and all the yeah, and all that is completely politically incorrect. Uh, it's so funny that it felt like that today. <laughs> anyway, so my question to you, Igor, is: Let's divide it in, in a few chapters, yeah, like a, like the exams in a school, one A, one B. So let's do for one A, and one A would be. Why do you think it is important that we address these issues of men and women now more than ever? And number B of that, maybe you want to weave them together, would be, I know we have talked a lot and we have seen a lot of uh, experiences offered when there is a... <laughs> no, we... <laughs> Nice. <laughs> so one B. So we have seen that there's a lot. For of... those of you not watching, he, our dog just farted in our face. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Back back to the, <laughs> to the back to the program. Um, there's a lot on offer out there where there's men groups and women groups healing the what they call the sacred feminine and the sacred masculine or the powerful feminine or the powerful masculine. And we have always looked at that with a curiosity, but also a feeling of like, why would you do that when what we're looking to do is heal the wound between feminine and masculine? So my big question would be, why do you think it's important that that happens in a space where both are present? So, A, why do you think it's important in this very moment of history, of time, that this wound is being properly addressed, the wound between the feminine and masculine? And the second one would be, why do you think it's important that we um, heal it in a sharing space instead of a separation space where we heal the feminine by itself and the masculine by itself? Okay, Maui, go with God. Why is it important now? I suppose you said in the beginning, why is it the most most important than ever or more important? More than important ever? than ever. Yeah. I don't think it is no. more important no, than ever. Probably it's isn't. always important. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but why it is more important now? Um, we are reaching. We're very, I think we have talked about this before, but we are getting really close to a historic moment for humankind, I think, where I think they call it the fifth extinction. Um, the different mechanisms that we have set in place for our civilization. because they have built in the virus of separation, greed, competition, to a level that they forget um, that empathy is equally important, is bringing us to um, a yeah, planetary moment where 
the human race is facing its own extinction really seriously. Um, for what I understand, even though my understanding is limited, the, the inclusion of AI in all of our other systems, because it speeds up the currently existing tendencies, it only makes this um, speed of decomposition of our civilization faster. So we are reaching not only to a theoretical limit, but to a very practical one. And I know it's not very sexy to talk about it, and I know in wellness circles you are always um, looking for the positive, yeah, to a place where you don't want to talk about the dangers and the problems and the negative because it doesn't sell. Um, so we avoid the subject. This, I see two possibilities. One, we get extinct in, in different or semi-extinct, or at least uh, there is a huge cataclysm in our history timeline where the leftover of the human race lives in very different conditions than the ones we know. And it's next to unrecognizable. Yeah? And it has happened in the past. Yeah? Big empires have fallen. This time the big empire encompasses all of Earth. Mm -hmm. yeah? If that was the case, if we were going to say goodbye, wouldn't it be the time to heal our wounds? Wouldn't it be the time, if you're close to your own personal death, to heal, to put down the hatchet, to find peace in your heart? to pause, look inside, remember what was important, give it priority. I think so. And then, if there was going to be a solution to this um, bottleneck that we face, it's no longer a slow, incremental solution. If there is going to be a solution to the situation that we are facing collectively in all departments, from energy, finances, uh, currency, education, um, um, healthcare, it's, it's like it's everything, everything, everything is built on a very very narrow view of what positive means that is not taken in consideration sustainability for the future generations, is not taken in consideration how much we are taking from the earth, is not taken in consideration how much we are wounding ourselves, how poor our diet is, so, so many things. Yeah? So when we say we're still growing or we're still at the best time in history, there is such a huge blind spot of what that is costing yeah. us. Yeah? So, if we were to pass the bottleneck, it would have to be through a revolution of the heart, through a awakening of the heart uh, quality of empathy and love and, and bridging togetherness, which would require to pause and heal. So what I find very interesting is that either of the two directions that this fork in history takes, it requires the same action, which is to pause and heal before extinction or to avoid extinction. I listened to a um, conversation yesterday with this incredibly intelligent human being, Daniel Smatzberger, 
and he was referring to another one with um, a computer coder and he had been invited to a conversation about AI and the interviewers didn't know that he was highly negative not negative, uh, pessimistic mm -hmm. yeah. his view was that we are fucked <laughs> but they didn't know this so apparently the interview took kind of like a dark direction, a turn to the dark, because they were not aware that he was going to present them with like, mm. hey guys, we're really mm. close to the end, yeah? So they're asking, so what do you think we should do? To which he answered, and Daniel Smatterberger was referring to this as a very beautiful moment, he said, I don't know, but at least let's be honest with each other in the end. Mm -hmm. So, bringing the um, conversation to the feminine and masculine. If you don't think man and woman, yeah? If you think the two polarities that we carry inside, mm -hmm. the yin, the yang, the day, the night, the cold, the hot, yeah? And, and, well, are, and just to contextualize, in your view, just in general, what would you say constitutes the feminine? It's more core principles, and what constitutes the masculine is more core principles. Oh, it's not for me to define, but if I no, would, just, uh, yeah, if I would look at the, my garden, mm. the feminine would be the earth, and the masculine would be the seed. So in a mm. super simplification, mm -hmm. yeah. The, the feminine creates a container where things can grow in, is a, a welcoming space that allows for endless potential to become. And then what becomes in that potential would be the masculine sphere, yeah? Mm. I don't know, maybe it's a, an oversimplification, but it's yeah. basic, yeah. yeah? So these two energies are dancing, yeah? And, and the unity of God separates into two, so these two entities can play, create contrast, create um, vibrance, create uh, multiplicity, create uh, a spectacle to be witnessed. Yeah. <laughs> and then through the witnessing of that spectacle, we find self-recognition um, as a part of God. So it's like kind of like a trick that one is placed to be able to know itself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so I think all wounds, in general, all of them, they come from taking sides extremely in either one of the polarities. So if I'm rich, fuck the poor. If I'm poor, fuck the rich. If I am white, fuck the black. If I'm black, fuck the white. If I am straight, fuck the gay, if I'm gay, fuck the straight, yeah? Mm. Um, so rather than creating an environment where differences can coexist, which we, we seem to try, yeah? Mm. We are, I think, as a species, trying to develop that, but we keep hitting our head continuously against the rock of a worldview that is really ingrained in our minds, where I am separate, Hence, what is outside of me constitutes a threat to my existence. And I have to fear it unless I can control it. And we started that way with nature. I have to fear it until I can, unless I can control it because I failed to find myself as part of it. Mm. So in humans or in mammals or in most animals, yeah, in most species, that um, expresses itself through the man and the woman, the masculine and the feminine. Now, let's talk about masculine and feminine because then we can speak about those two energies being inside both the man, mm -hmm. the woman, and anything in between. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Any one would have masculine and feminine qualities. So, because one of the polarities because the two polarities are in opposition and then one has had more power than the other. We've created 
a transgenerational trauma that is very active, very, very clear in women, but also in men, because it's not like we have been expressing a healthy version of masculinity. <laughs> you know, it's not like men also have suffered from yeah. um, a, a model yeah. of masculinity that is just totally fucked up, mm -hmm. yeah? So, healing between the man and the woman between the masculine and the feminine in a broader perspective it's fundamental for all other healings it's fundamental for the understanding of your yeses and your noes of your desires and your constraints of your actions and your holding back of your fear and your courage it's basically to create enough um, neuroplasticity to see opposing energies coexist peacefully. I heard someone, uh, oh, it was so beautiful, who said this? I don't remember in, a, in a, an interview. Someone who was saying, my grandmother taught me to be able to hold an opinion that I disagree with for long enough to see if I can change my mind around it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that was Beautiful. very beautiful. Yeah. Yeah? Um, so, yeah, I think the biggest representation for us in day-to-day -day life it will be the, um, achieving peace between the genders. Even if now we have an increased awareness of maybe more genders, it's still between the polarities yeah. within those yeah. genders. Yeah. So I think it's essential, maybe what you asked in the beginning, if it's m the most important than ever, maybe because of the situation that we are in, that it's really, really acute in the necessity to find solutions and find bridges we have come to a point that it's really, 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 really urgent. Mm. But I don't think it's less urgent than it has ever been, yeah? Mm. Um, so now it's um, imperative, yeah? yeah? Maybe that's the... Um... And I also think I, if, if you... I mean, you can dive right back to Freud if you want, that there's this moment when you, as a boy or a girl or a confused in-between, are in the sandbox or in the kindergarten and you face your first um, attraction and rejection from that which you are uh, naturally attracted to or curious to. So let's say um, one that is like pointed for me and this has nothing to do with anything else that, to show what it, what it can do is when I was in kindergarten I was pooing and I had forgotten to lock the door. And I was not necessarily bullied, but I was definitely like the weird one in the corner. So I was looked a little bit like an alien, yeah. And the boy stormed in and amongst these boys was the boy that I really liked. Even as a four year, five year old, I really liked him. And they burst open the door and they said something about how the China girl smells worse or something like this. And something that simple can actually create such a huge schism in you that... So you mean you felt uh, worse because there were boys instead of there were girls? Not just because there were boys instead of girls, they f because it was the boy that I liked. Mm -hmm. So that rejection, because it, it's your experience of love, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And we do... Our, one of our first, besides our parents, the first experiences of love we have are these little baby crushes, little, oh, he's cute, she's cute, that feels interesting, I feel something strange in me when I look at that person. And I would contend that people that <laughs> are in power, yeah. that are running things, they are running very much from that rejection. Mm-hmm very much from that insecurity, then it's so deeply like rooted in, in biology and in, um, in the tension between what creates life. Mm -hmm. 
uh, that yes, it is super important because I think it's fundamental for so many of our other behaviors, in a sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sorry, I interjected there. Mm-hmm. Um, that was our laundry that blew to the ground. And then the second part of the question. Um, maybe I should say I, I agree with that, that I feel like it's it's of some vitality that we open this discussion of healing between the masculine and feminine in a together space where there's both masculine and feminine, both men and women and third, fourth, fifth gender as well, because that will create a sense that it is a common issue that we need to to address and not one that needs to be addressed in this way for women, in this way for men, because once again that is an exclusive thing. But what are your thoughts? Or elaborate. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've done activities with only men, yeah? I come from sports, competitive sports in team sports. So we were only boys in the football teams, and I know that dynamic, yeah? Um, but then later on, I remember being asked early in the beginning to teach a yoga class for men. Mm. I actually said no. I, I didn't understand the reason why you would need to be just men in the room, yeah? And in my adult life, I have never encountered that necessity. And I, I know there are men groups and I know there are women groups where you address particular subjects to your gender. And um, there must have some validity because there are people who um, find them useful, yeah? Um, I think maybe it's an initial state, maybe... I'm trying to be diplomatic. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, diplomatic and also understanding. I, I mm. like maybe holding I'm, the idea long enough for you to be able to see the. No, I've, I've held this idea for long. Yeah, um, for instance, I have encountered that for some women that I have talked with, yeah, if you're very wounded in your sexuality and if you have a lot of trauma and if you have a lot of ghosts, there are parts of your expression and sharings that for what I have understood, they find that it's easier to share and to come clean when there is a group of just women. Yeah, I've, mm-hmm. I've heard this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and maybe the similar case for men that they feel like it's been hard for them to be soft and cry and then they have to exercise a little bit some of the um programming that they were yeah. so forcefully uploaded. Yeah, and, and yeah. I feel that yeah. maybe there is an initial step to manhood and womanhood that rests on maybe ancient tribal rituals of separating the men and the women, the wizards and the witches, mm-hmm. the warriors and the caretakers. I I, I don't know. So I'm I'm tolerant. I don't. I don't seem to need it, and I don't seem to find it interesting for myself. But I'm tolerant to see that it plays a role for some mm-hmm. people. Yeah. Now, my proposal is, or our proposal is, let's address these issues in a room where we are all together, men and women. Um, if we're going to talk about traumas that a woman through her mother or her grandmother or her own experience, um, has felt herself developing through her life because of an abusive masculine presence in her life, in any field of her life. I want that to happen in a room where there are men present. Both for the man to see the damage that 
misusing masculinity can inflict in the other. And the other woman or in a feminine man, it doesn't need to be a woman, yeah? Or in his own femininity that you have pushed down because mm. you have to be this dude in control, whatever, yeah? So I think that if the feminine is going to express her pain, I want the masculine to be there, to listen, to receive, to learn. Now, when the feminine is going to express her greatness, all the amazing qualities of being a, an embodied, yeah, feminine, a woman, then I want the man or the masculine to be there present to learn, to drink from it, to expand through really appreciating and witnessing how beautiful the feminine energy is, and vice versa, yeah? If the man is going to express, I mean, in this case, it's more imbalanced the other way. But still, there might be, no, now that, so. that think femininity is rising in some ways, in some circles, is rising with a disproportionate amount of bitterness and resentment that sometimes it hurts. I can see it in myself, yeah. Sometimes that disproportionate resentment. Oh, men are like this. Sometimes when I hear that, it's like, not all men are like this. I'm not like that, for instance. Mm -hmm. So I, it doesn't matter. Let me just conclude this little. I think when we see our strengths or our weaknesses in the gender, or in the polarity even, even if it's not the gender um, mm -hmm. physically, I think that to have the other one witness you in your fragility or in your strength, I, with respect and, and space and dialogue and maybe and a skillful moderator, but I think that's where we heal, really. Mm -hmm. I think more separation where the women go over there and the men go over there and we, for that moment, become gods and goddesses and sacred this and sacred that. There's a lot of lingo and a lot mm. of... Um, I think it's a little artificial, yeah? Mm. I think if it is considered as a stepstone for integration, maybe it's useful. But it becomes very strongly labeled, marketed, if it becomes a product, I think capitalism <laughs> can really swallow everything and turn it into a product, including healing. Yeah. So I, th yeah, my, our proposal or my proposal is let's do it when we are all in the room together, mm -hmm. including if it gets a little messy. Let's pause from uh, the mess we created. Look at the mess. Breathe. Look at the mess. Mm -hmm clean it up, maybe, maybe get a little hit, we get a life opportunity to say, I'm sorry, my words betrayed me. Mm. Um, please give me another chance to explain myself better. Yeah, uh, for me, maybe it's extra easy because I am a man that is living around women and in women's circles often, yeah? And the men that I have close to me or in my life are generally speaking, soft men with a strong percentage of feminine in them, yeah? So, I repeat, I can see the validity as a first step to heal your wound in a, a gender singular context, but I can only see that as a stepping stone to heal together. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question mm -hmm. more or less? Mm -hmm. It's interesting because uh, as of late, I have a lot of like straight guy guy friend friends, yeah. And what you said before is that it has been maybe the woman that has been more victimized. And yes, I feel like that in the circumstantial, worldly, outwardly setting, absolutely. But from my relationship with men, what I feel is that the man or the masculine has been equally betrayed by the fact that it has not been allowed to be feminine. I can see in... No, no not only that. Eh? Yeah. Let me... 
Not even to be masculine. Mm. To be masculine is not go around telling people what they have to do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the yeah. embodiment of, mm. of beautifully creative masculinity is not the shitty world that we come yeah. from. Fuck mm. that shit. Yeah. No, that is not. That is twisted, um, weak, fearful, insecure, shitty men who have rise to power because they are so insecure and they need to control other men and tell them what to do. That is not masculinity. So I'm not, we have suffered not just because we have not been allowed to be feminine, but because we are told what masculine is in a package that has one and a thousand, a thousand and one lies. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, so yeah, mm. continue. But at the same time, I would say the the warp of the masculine has gone in a, in a turn. And this is why it's interesting to keep women in, in the room as well as, let's say, the masculine talks about itself. So there was a, a minor revolution in feminism during the era when I grew up. And and a lot of it felt like, like any revolution has to be in the beginning. You bring your spears because it's really hard to cut through tradition. It's really hard to cut through what... Uh, what history has dictated. And then uh, you could see that the masculine could soften a little bit, it could open up a little bit more, and then there is a lot of space and and room for the man to become more, or apply more the fem feminine principle in their life. But then I've also seen, and this is very interesting, <laughs> that then the women go like, ah, pussy. <laughs> like, no, because they actually do want the man-man. They want the man that uh, puts you under the shoulder and goes and, like, punch you really hard. And so there is a... That puts you on the shoulder and punches you hard. <laughs> no, not punches you, pounds you. Oh, I yeah. mean, uh, yeah, yeah. In, the, in the bedroom. <laughs> so I do feel like it, that is an interesting ping-pong game because I feel like in the healing of it must also be the acknowledgement that the tension there is always going to be a certain tension because there, there is always tension between the polar opposites. Well, because you want yeah. that tension. Because you o want that otherwise tension. Otherwise, unity would have stayed united. Exactly. Yeah, of course. So it's not that the resolution of the opposites lands in a... Nah, maybe it lands more in, that, in the understanding that within this tension, there are strong feelings and there are strong feelings that need to be expressed on both angles, but that nobody is necessarily right and nobody is necessarily wrong. But it is a... Is a continuous dance. Well, that's yeah. the way it's yeah. supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I feel and the like... Thing is, I think what happens is that one of the qualities of sustainability is um, restraint. If you just produce and consume all you want mm -hmm. and you desire, you extinguish mm -hmm. that which you are consuming. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. If you are the strong one and you don't restrain, you just fucking kill everybody, yes. yeah? Or you turn them into mm -hmm. your slave. If you are the hot one and your pussy is juicy and you are like, yeah, and you make everybody horny and you're just overusing it, you are also creating a necessary, a necessary conflict, yeah? So sustainability in the polarities always implies a certain degree of restraint. Mm. And then the allowance for joy to flourish in your most deepest fundamental expression. So both you have to allow the tolerance for the masculine to be fucking masculine and the feminine to be, yeah, feminine, yeah. Let's talk now in a context of sexuality, yeah. Um, but at the same time, the wisdom to know when you restrain a little bit your maximum potential so the polarities don't extinguish each other mm. yeah but how are you going to learn that unless you're dancing together and yeah. you are doing that sparring yeah like yeah. you go to yeah. do your kung fu yeah? yeah so you can train to kick a sandbag for as long as you want but unless you go into the ring and you guys dance and fight and mm. punch and receive and that's when you really learn how the dance of a martial art fight mm. happens yeah and then I think, besides that, another thing that is very important is this generalization. I think besides the difficulty sometimes to now talk about men and women because the new explosion of linguistic, politically correctness around mm -hmm. genders, mm -hmm. and 
both of us are incredibly tolerant. You are whatever you want to be, yeah, in any <laughs> um, branch of your sexual orientation and your gender orientation, we don't care. A human is a human is a human, yeah. But there is a certain linguistic labeling that is making us going through the maze with like, can I say this? Can I say that? Yeah, like, yeah. it's like, oh, now... It's so tiring, I, yes. I know, yeah, yeah. but now, yeah. in, like, mm -hmm. sometimes you were going to say a yeah. woman, and you have to pause and backtrack and say a vagina owning human, yeah? Like, yeah. otherwise people are going to get pissed mm -hmm. at you. So, <laughs> besides that, let's put that aside. Um, <coughs> Sorry. Did you not click the, the cough button? <laughs> <laughs> they have in the mic. Okay, so... Besides that, I think it's more useful to talk about masculine and feminine that, than man and woman. Mm -hmm. Because there's no way I can put you and my mother in the same group. No. There's like, yeah. <laughs> like the upbringing that she had mm. and the life experiences that she had, the relationship to man and the men that she encountered in the time in history that she encountered them with the political um, background educational background and social background he created a woman then if i think of all the same in you and your experience and your life situations and the way you lived your life and the people that were in your life it's like you two could be from a different planet mm. now you're both women mm. but if i say women and i put my mother and you in the same group i'm doing a gross oversimplification that helps no one yeah so when people go like men or women it's just like <laughs> who <laughs> yeah. it's like just like same birds subcategories yes yeah. yes yeah, so yeah. You, that's why i think sometimes it's easier and more convenient to talk about the, the masculine, masculine principle and, and the feminine yeah. principle because yeah like otherwise you just say a word it's like the word God. What does it yeah, mean God for, it mean? for yeah. many for different, different people? people yeah? For different things, yeah. So, and, and I think that is a little bit the same that we are facing now with um, what I started the conversation with, this sense of things are good or things are bad. What are the measuring... Um, through which lens are we seeing? Exactly. Measuring? So I think what we are trying through the lens of wisdom is to zoom out a little and say when I say things are well or when I say this particular situation is positive is positive not for this microcosmos but it's positive yeah mm. and because our technological tools and because of our uh, communication infrastructure and our financial infrastructure has become global we are now facing situations where our failure to act with wisdom affects everybody yeah. and threatens everybody. Mm. And everything. And everything. Mm. I mean, not the, I don't think the planet. You can drop 10 atom bombs and in 100,000 mm. years, like, there's no people, but the planet will be fucking mm. amazing. So I don't think the actual planet is under our threat. I think that's very arrogant. Yeah. But our civilization is. Mm. Yeah. So the healing that needs to happen at a planetary level, or at least at a species level, us, the, the humans, is that in the dance from light to dark, we must deeply understand that all of it is us. Mm. Because the minute I draw a line and I say, that is not me, then I'm setting the perfect ground for war. And war with the weapons that we have now, and I don't mean actual mm -hmm. war, but yeah. any kind of war, yeah. even business war, like I want to produce my product earlier, faster and better than you. Yeah. So I use this technological tool. This is what's happening with AI. I use this new AI. Is it safe? Is it aligned with the greater good? I don't know, <laughs> but it, it will create 
an advantage for my company. That which I need to win the war. Yeah. Then you are going to do the same. Mm -hmm. Generate the mm -hmm. next AI that processes faster mm -hmm. information and uses mm -hmm. more data points and I don't know, whatever they do that is a little confusing even for them. Yeah? But then once again, because of our narrow objectives, we forget the whole and we create partial victories that are only destroying the total. And that was okay when our partial victories were a region or a city or a particular sector of the market, but now our partial victories affect everything. Everything is interconnected. It's always been, but now we've gone to the level that it... It actually is. It is at the planetary mm -hmm. level. So if we do not address if we do not find a way to dance gracefully between the polarities, understanding that both are needed and that both are the father and the mother of a multiplicity of even myriads of polarities, if we do not understand that, we're gone. We're gone. But even if we were going to be gone, I want to understand that before I'm gone. So if it was my own personal life and I'm dying, yeah, so I, I want to spend my last, all my life, I'm doing that all my life. But if it was like really imminent, I would really pause and heal my heart. So I, that's why I feel like it doesn't really matter which direction um, we are going uh, in this moment in our civilization, in this moment in history, because both possibilities, extinction, and the invention of a new beautiful world that is based on love and wisdom, both require to pause, to look in, and to heal. And I think because our main um, confusion is how to navigate through polarity. Peace between masculine and feminine is absolutely essential. And we can see it in our own relationship. You and I, we love each other very much, yeah? but we have a relationship that has never been free from conflict. Yeah? It's, there's a lot of splash in between us. Sometimes often, sometimes rarely, but we feel in our own relationship the, the hot and the cold coming together and doing pssst, yeah, very much. <laughs> now, when that is not healed, we are in the middle of a conflict. Fuck, everything else is so fucking more, so much more difficult. Like, to work is more difficult, to enjoy life is more difficult. If I go surfing and I come from a conflict with you, I... I mean, yeah, it's, it's like there is literally a stone inside my shoe. So, for everybody. The same as I see Iomi, she comes home and she can, I don't know, have a bad day because of school or a bad day because of her friends or whatever it is. But if it's a bad day about the boy <laughs> or the relationship to desire, to being liked, to... Mm. That's a bad day. That's, that's when the tears day. gone, yeah. Yeah? yeah? So I think... Um, yeah, it does mean a lot. Of course, mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. um, because it's when we come together... It's like you, you are this side and you are this side, and then by paying attention to the relationship in the middle, to the energetic chi, that the two polarities share at the center of the sphere is, is the... The kind of thing that creates life. Yes, and it's also our ability in our embodied form to have a taste of unity. Mm -hmm. I mean, in general with everything else, but in particular, this is maybe the highest mm -hmm. love, orgasm, 
Yeah, ecstasy. It's built in our bodies to have that moment of the, the two, you know, like the hands, yeah? They're not the same. They're symmetric, yeah? They're polar opposites. So I think that's fundamental in our healing process, yeah? I think. That was a very satisfying answer. And I liked how you tied it in all together. Did you just say that to make me happy? <laughs> <laughs> yes, woman. <laughs> you like my earrings? <laughs> I do like your um, um, Okay, so let's uh, use this last little moments and speak a little bit about this workshop that we're going to have and invite people to come and why we think it's, uh, it will be an interesting workshop. You mean me? Well, it was your, your, uh, it was your baby, the birth of the workshop. I'm enthusiastically uh, participating, co-hosting and collaborating. But I feel like that there was a lot of thought into this workshop, and I do feel like it would be, it is going to be very, um, yeah, very, very good for, for people. I want you to elaborate well, on it. I think if I go back to the beginning of this conversation, I would fucking hate to look back at this moment in history and see that everything is collapsing around me and I was looking away. And mm. I, or even worse, mm. I fucking saw it and I said nothing. Mm. And I tried nothing. And I pretended that it was not happening. And it is happening. It is happening. And it's not happening because I look at the news. I don't look at the news. It's happening because I see the sadness in people's eyes in a moment in history where we have the highest degree of comfort and we are hollow and we are sad and we are disconnected from source and from our essence and it is my strong determination that every action that I take and specifically professional with, with my vocation, is directed to give us hope that we can reconnect, is directed to make us once again feel that there is a fountain of wisdom inside, to make people feel that awakening is possible. Not just that it's necessary, but that it's possible. And the reason that awakening is possible because the, is because the wisdom that will facilitate awakening, or if you want to put it the other way, the wisdom that will be born out of the awakening experience is not external. The Buddha is inside. We have lost the connection to Source, to God, to divinity, to the universal mind, to you name it in whichever way you name it, only cosmetically. Mm. Indeed. The connection is always there. Mm. The, the Buddha nature is who we really are. Um, so I believe, or maybe I want to believe. No, I believe. I feel it that the radical shift that is required for humanity to manage to build a bridge into a new civilization that is built on the principles of love and wisdom, that shift is possible. Yes, I agree. And it's not possible if you follow the... the, the slow increments, it, it will be too late. Mm. It will be too late. It's not like we improve this particular no. 
aspect of our educational mm -hmm. system and we improve a little bit our budget in our healthcare, and it is not going to work that way. It needs to... Yeah? Now, that sounds like science fiction, but it is also science fiction that after thousands of years of human existence, we disappear. That also <laughs> sounds weird, yeah? Mm -hmm. But it also sounds weird that there will not be whales in the ocean. Mm. And it also sounds weird that there will not be the Amazonian rainforest that's mm. been there for <laughs> millennia. Mm. Um, so of, we are facing weird. We are facing weird. We are facing computers that think. Mm -hmm. Like, that's weird. Yeah? We are facing a multi-layered experience where each one of the layers is going to surprise us on a daily basis now. Mm. Yeah. In order to navigate through this, um, yesterday I heard it referred as the Great Simplification. Mm -hmm. So in order for us to navigate through the Great, the great Simplification that we are going to face as a species, there is a shift needed. And this shift is only going to happen if we focus, if we, <clears throat> if we focus on it, if we, f if we focus not only in what we can do to bring it forth, but really, really deeply in the fact that we can make it possible. In the faith in the connection between man and God. And woman and God. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's a patriar patriarchal uh, heritage, eh? that the masculine gender refers to the whole, while the feminine gender does not refer to the whole. Mm. Yeah. So, yes. Mm. Um, that womankind, Humankind. It, humankind. Yeah. Is God. Yeah. Or has the possibility of experiencing itself as God. Because it is. We really, really, really have to feel divinity in our actions, in our words, in our breath, and manifest it. Mm. 